are 13,000 customs items on the customs unions spreadsheet, over 13,000. If we leave the European Union on my basis of free trade, almost all of those go. So the whole job becomes much, much simpler. So the Public Accounts Committee is assuming that you apply the current customs regulations. That would be a mistake. What we want to do is move to free trade, get rid of all these tariffs and non-tariff barriers to really open up the United Kingdom, and then this is not necessary. The other really striking thing you've said is that the £350 million for the NHS that was a commitment made by the Leave campaign. It wasn't a commitment made by the Conservative Party or the government. So why are you urging the government to do this? You're absolutely right. But I think when you make promises, the electorate looks at the promise in broad terms and doesn't say, oh, well, this is only the promise of part of the Conservative Party or of the Leave campaign. I think voters reasonably thought it was a promise that was being made in the event that we voted to leave and that when they voted to leave, they were voting to leave, but also for £350 million a week for the NHS once we had left. And I think politicians would be wise to deliver on implied promises as well as ones that are nailed down without any sub-clauses and small print. Looking at the Brexit negotiations, you said that the Chancellor needed to double the amount of money he's putting by as a contingency. £250 million extra isn't a great deal of money in the great scheme of things. So why don't you think he's done that? Well, I mean, I agree with you. £250 million in the great scheme of government expenditure uh, is not the largest amount it will spend. I was saying a further contingency on top of that, which may well not be needed. Um, I, I think the government needs to be showing very clearly to our interlocutors in the EU that we will be ready on day one without a deal. I think it's very important from a negotiating standpoint, but also it may happen. And if it does happen, we have to be ready and not get to the position a few months before the deadline where the EU can face us with almost anything because the EU knows we won't be ready. Why is the Chancellor not doing that? Well, perhaps he will do it in his budget next week. Do you think the EU are deliberately stalling the talks, the phase one talks, so they can just ratchet up the amount of money they get from us? Oh, yes, that's of course why they're doing it. Uh, uh, the EU, from its own point of view, is negotiating in a perfectly reasonable way, in a way it thinks will get it the most. We have to be very clear that this way of negotiating will, in fact, get it the least, because if we leave without a deal, their multi-annual financial framework is insolvent. Are you at all attracted by this suggestion that Northern Ireland would remain within the single market and customs union as a part of the UK with special status like Hong Kong has with China? Margaret Thatcher said that Northern Ireland was as much part of the country as Finchley. In my view, Northern Ireland is as much as part of the country as Somerset. That it is part of my country, part of my nation. It is not, uh, like Hong Kong, uh, an administrative region of a greater whole. It is part of the United Kingdom. The Conservative and Unionist Party is committed to that and will not break up the United Kingdom for the convenience uh, of Mr Barnier. So we have a vote in the Commons this evening. How many Conservative MPs are going to vote against the government, do you think? Over the eight days uh, in committee stage, my expectation is that the government is pretty safe on all the votes, with the exception of some of the Henry VIII clauses, though that may be overtaken by the promise of further legislation to implement the withdrawal bill, which makes those clauses less necessary. There are a number of Labour MPs who will vote with the government who have committed to um, delivering on Brexit. Not all Brexiteers, but committed to delivering on, on Brexit. And there's a relatively small number uh, of Conservative rebels. I mean, from my point of view, it's quite interesting, because I used to be on the other side of this. I used to be one of the rebels against more Europe. Uh, and we were very rarely enough to defeat the government, and I think the same applies now.